Hello, my name is Dave and I'm going to, in this video, take you through um, the fire assay of a couple of ore samples that I collected in old gold mines, in and around old gold mines um, in Southern California. And um, I collected a bunch and I just recently learned how to do fire assays, so it's far from perfect. The, um, I probably didn't use enough flux in this uh, particular case, and uh, the smelt was very, like, not very runny, and um, so forth and so on. But I think it's a great place to start. You can see what I did and how I did it. So this fire assay takes place in my uh, pottery kiln which is non-ideal, it's very slow, it's way too big, and so forth. However, it did work, and you can see the results. And at the end, I will calculate for you um, the concentration of one of the samples um, in grams per, per uh, metric ton. And that's kind of an interesting and fun calculation. The two ores I selected for this uh, video are really quite different. This is what one looks like. This came from what I believe was the high-grade pile from a mine um, operated last time in around 1970. And um, it doesn't look uh, heavily mineralized, but this was in their high-grade pile next to the shaft. And so I selected this ore and then in a completely different location, I selected ore from a different mine. And this is what that ore looks like. It's full of copper. And just to warn you, and you'll see this in the video, this did not smelt and cupel well enough um, at this time to, to give us a concentration. But I'm going to keep working on this and other videos, I'll show you the results of that. In another video, I'll also show you um, the uh, act of collecting the ore samples themselves. So let's get on with it. I hope you enjoy this. All right, so I'm going to run a smelt and do an assay. And here's how I crush the rock. I have a base plate. This is a quarter inch steel. On top of that I place this piece of um, neoprene rubber. That just dampens the vibrations really nice. I've got one of these tubs from um, Ikea. They're called Samla. Then I have um, another neoprene rubber mat. And then I have a beautiful, big, thick, three-quarter inch piece of uh, steel bar stock picked up at the local um, metal company, like 10 bucks worth of steel. And that's it. Then I use my trusty old S-Wing, which I've had for, I don't know, ever kid. I was a kid, I think, when I got this. And this turns out to be perfect for crushing. And of course the tub keeps the material from going everywhere. I use a respirator and earphone, uh, ear protection. So I have a bag of uh, rocks I want to assay. And that's what they look like. And there's quite a bit of copper. And they're, they're quite heavy. Okay, so I'll try to select a representative sample.
Okay, here's the mixture for smelting. This is uh, sample number 102, 200 grams, 300 grams of Chapman's Flux, 50 grams of Litharge, and 10 grams of flour as a reducing agent. And we'll see if that's enough. I've had some trouble um, getting the uh, smelt to reduce to lead. So I'll stir that up. This is a good sized charge for an A6 uh, fire clay crucible. There's a brand new A6 crucible. The charge is going in. Alright, there's the uh, two smelts um, in the kiln. Right, that's what came out of the cone mold. Um, very different from the last time I smelted. Uh, different ore. It's uh, the glass, the slag, which is glass, in a way, is greenish. Now let's see if I got any lead. I saw some lead come out of the crucible. Oh yeah, I got a little lead button. Alright, well I crushed up all of that slag and I found the other little piece of uh, lead that I saw come out, so I'm happy with that. And I ended up with uh, six grams of lead and there was enough litharge for 46 grams of lead, so that's uh, interesting. I'm not reducing the lead fully, so I think I need even more reducer, which would be flour in my case. There's the cone. It's the one that had lots of copper and the slag looks completely different. I guess that's not unexpected. These graphite cone molds are incredible. It just slips right out. And we'll see if we can find any lead. So this time I noticed that all of the lead went into the cone mold, so I'm happy with that. Here's the button, a tiny little button. I'm not reducing very much lead, and that's a bit of a worry. So I, I have to add more reducer. I bumped it up this time to 10 grams of flour, and next time I bump it up again, maybe to 15 grams of flour. Flour has a very strong um, reducing quality because of the carbon in it. Anyway, let's weigh up this little tiny lead button. I'm glad I got one at all. Only four grams of lead. Lucky to have gotten that. 
So here's the slag from sample 108. It's really totally different. You can see the copper actually um, got reduced by the iron in the pan where it touched the uh, iron pan that I was using. That's kind of beautiful. And it's just totally full of copper. It's really heavy slag. I've got the lead from almost 102. And we'll put that in the left hand cupel. Alright, temperature is at 1850. I'm going to open the door and see what we got. And you can see the one on the left, 102, has opened up. The one on the right, oh, don't know, that's 108. It looks frozen to me. Alright, let's take a look. Everything should be done. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. Here's uh, 102. You can see the little prill in there. Kind of uh, silver gold color. And here's 108. And uh, I'll try adding some lead and doing it again. But I suspect that's all copper that didn't get oxidized and uh, cupelled away. Let's see if I can move that. Interesting. Alright, so let's take this little guy out here. I took a photo of this uh, on the iPhone and estimate the diameter of the prill from direct measurement off the iPhone screen to be 0.4 millimeter. Okay, so I tried a big long explanation of um, how to do this calculation and honestly it's not worth the effort to try to follow it. I'm going to give you just the um, result. So. If we have a sphere, and this sphere had better be less than, let's say, a millimeter, or it won't be spherical. But in almost all cases, if you run 100 or 200 grams, it's going to be less than a millimeter, unless you've got a super rich uh, body of ore. So, the, um, the message is this. I measure the diameter using the trick on the iPhone or however you'd like to measure the diameter and call that the diameter and the units are millimeters. We're going to call the fractional content of the gold. Um, we're going to give it the letter K, the symbol K, and we're going to say the weight of the starting weight of the sample is W. Then we want to know C, which is the concentration of gold in the ore, and we want it in the conventional units of grams per metric ton, or grams per 1,000 kilograms. And it turns out to be remarkably simple and easy to remember if you make a small approximation. So it's 10,000 times d cubed times k divided by w. And so let's run through that for my particular example where D, the diameter was 0 0.4 millimeters. I'm assuming that the concentration, the fractional concentration of gold in that sample was 40%, which in terms of a number is 0 0.4. And the weight of this, the starting weight of the sample was 200 grams. Um, the, the prill was very spherical as far as I could tell, so I shouldn't have too much of an error in that estimation. So if I run through this formula, 
and um, you can do that yourself on a calculator or however you like to do it. The concentration turned out to be 1.25 grams of gold per metric ton. All right, so let's think about what we've um, done. Um, the smelt certainly did not go perfectly. The, um, the smelt turned out very viscous, too viscous, I think. I probably need to um, double the amount of flux. Um, maybe I should add borax to the smelt. I, I'm not too sure uh, yet what I'll do, but probably just increase the amount of flux, Chapman's flux, for the next one. Um, we were able to get a nice little prill after cupellation of sample 102 and sample 108 had so much copper and maybe other base metals in it that it didn't cupel. I'm going to try adding um, more lead to that or maybe I'll try bismuth, I'm not sure. Crush it up in a mortar and pestle and give it a, another try at cupellation. Nonetheless, sample 102 turned out to have um, gold in it. I wouldn't call it a very high concentration at about a gram per metric ton. But I may not have collected all of the gold uh, in that ore sample. Um, I didn't get anywhere near as much um, lead, metal, um, out of the smelt as I expected. I should have gotten about 45 grams and I got 4 grams or 6 grams. So my technique um, I think kind of sucks right now but I'll work on that and uh, try to improve it. I think Chapman's Flux is an excellent um, way of going because it will oxidize the high sulfur minerals like the uh, sample 108 was obviously very high in sulfides. And it does a good job at the pure quartz sample also. So I'm going to stick with that and play with the recipe. I probably need to, I know that iron will reduce more lead and I might try um, iron rebar. You know, quarter inch iron rebar is about as cheap as you can get. So I'll probably try that the next time. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy this video and um, you know I'll make some more so stay tuned bye bye